Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Puya Vani Bayat from Maidasaf. Uh, today is the second day of um, our webinar, training webinars. And yesterday, we actually covered steel arch bridge and uh, reinforced concrete slab bridge. Today, um, we're going to cover the pre-stressed uh, concrete beam bridge. So during the session, if you have any question, feel free to uh, use the <coughs> chat uh, box and then um, ask me your question. OK, so let me start the presentation. OK, single span composite precast beam and deck bridge. This is the cross beam, um, one of the girders, and material properties. Okay. And this is the geometry and boundary condition. This is the tendon profile. Okay, and uh, this one is for um, length, um, defining the eccentricity. So we're gonna use it later. So you have a overview for now. Okay. Let me start the uh, open a new file, and then um, the very first thing is to change the unit, I'm going with the keeps and inch, and now I'm going to define the material. Uh, right click on the screen, uh, first, first let's go to the work, so you see there is nothing here, so this is a, um, a work tree, so whatever we are uh, modeling or creating, it's going to show up here on the left side. So by right click on the main screen and go to the properties and material. Add and uh, I'm going to define some concrete material. So um, you have two ways to define your uh, material properties. One is um, using the standards. For example, here is a ASTM standard, or you can go with the uh, user defined. All right. For now, let's. Uh, select, for example, grade 6,000, 6, and we have all the uh, material properties you can see here. So if I say apply, we're going to have one section, and uh, if I want to uh, create something with the uh, user defined, I can name it, call it section 1 and then use none of the uh, standards and come in here you see in this dialog box I can change the uh, modulus of elasticity, position ratio and whatever I want. Okay, I'm changing this to 3834 I stick with the, the position ratio thermal uh, coefficient 0, weight density 0 and I'm going to, uh, I made actually the weight density zero, and later on, I want to apply the uh, deck load um, as a uh, distributed load. Say so, okay, I'm going to have the section. Um, I'm going to model another section for you, which is going to be tendons. So, uh, here we have options, still concrete and uh, user defined find this material. Okay. So directly I can enter my uh, values for the modulus of elasticity here. I uh, start with 28, 500. Cohesion ratio uh, 0 0.3. Thermal expansion 0. Weight density I'm going to put 8.681 to 10 to the power negative 5. All right. So, all right, I forgot to put the name to the tendon. 
and okay. So we have three uh, material defined here. So uh, at the top of this box, you can see we have material at the left, and in the middle we have sections. So I can uh, click on the section and create my section by pressing Add. Um, I have a variety of sections. Uh, could be user defined, pre-stress, or composite. Now I'm going to uh, define the composite. Come to the composite sections and composite I section. Uh, there are two ways to define the composite section. One is to define, uh, I mean, enter your values uh, manually, or um, you can define, uh, you can select from the um, our database based on the H2 or other um, standards. Okay, for now, let's. Uh, I'm going to show you how to enter um, values manually. So for the slab width, start from here. Say so 108. Girder number one. And slab 108. Thickness 7.5 and hunch point five. All right, and here, let me show you. This is a section that uh, we are going to model, and uh, it has different values uh, by uh, named HL and BL. On the left and right side, uh, you have different values. So you can model a uh, non-symmetric unsymmetric, um, section. But for now, because uh, we are going to with the symmetric section, I'm just pressing this one, and then we modeling one side, and then the uh, other side gonna be the same. And um, you can see some red uh, points here called uh, J1, which is the point of symmetry, and the JL1, JL2, showing the slope of this uh, section, and uh, help you to model the section. Okay. For now, I'm selecting J1 and JL1. And then um, entering my uh, data, which I have it um, here, 72 for H1, 3.5, and 13. So at the left side, you can see your section is created. And uh, for the ratio of, um, for this ratio, I'm entering 1.2749. And section name called interior precasting. So pressing OK, and I have my section. There was another way also you can able to uh, select it from uh, directly from code. Let me show you here. You can uh, simply go to um, precast uh, concrete and then select PCSI and select from H2 to different types or um, from captures. Okay. So now I'm opening a file which have um, I've defined all the uh, material and sections. Okay. So here you can see all the material I defined and the sections. Now the next step is to define the geometry. So I'm I'm going to start from scratch and uh, defining um, the nodes. So right click on the uh, main screen, nodes, and create nodes. Um, there's a dialog box at the left showing me the um, first coordination. I want to start with the uh, point of origin and the distances. I'm going with 0, 9, and 0, which gives me the space between um, girders. And then number of the time, uh, I want to have six girders, and uh, therefore I need five spacing. Say apply. 
and I, if I at the right side, if I switch the top view, you can see the nodes created here. Now um, I'm going to um, create the girders. So what can I do? Easily select all the nodes, and the software has an option which um, let me to create a line element with uh, having just one node. All right. So right click on the screen, go to element, and extrude. Okay. In extrude, you see here, you see that node to line. I'm selecting beam, and now we're going with the precast beam. And for the section, also we're going with the interior precast. Equal distances. Uh, I'm going along x-axis. So what happened here? So it's gonna be ten, zero, and zero. And the number of the time that I want to have this um, element is twelve times. Pressing apply, and I have. If I switch to the ISO view, you can see uh, we have our girders um, created. All right. Let me go back to the top view and uh, turn this uh, 3D view off and come back to the wire uh, view. Now, uh, what we have to do if to assign the, uh, you see, if I go to the sections, interior uh, interior precast beams, it shows everything. But I have to assign the exterior precast beam to um, those exterior um, girders. So, what I do, and select all, selecting these two girders, selecting the window, this one, and this one. And then come to the left side, uh, exterior precast uh, beams. Just drag it and drop it. So now if I press and double click on the interior, you see them. And the exterior are assigned to this one. OK. So let's go back to the work. And um, we have to create the cross beams. So for creating the cross beam, I need just to select, let me unselect everything. Uh, I'm selecting the nodes in the bottom, right here. The same thing, right click, element, extrude. I'm going to extrude it along the y-axis. So this uh, material be cross beam and the section be interior cross beam. Equal distances. I'm going to um, to y direction. So it's going to be 0, 9, and 5. And the number of times, 5 times. OK, pressing apply. I have it there, here. So the same thing we have to do. Um, selecting the exterior or end cross beams and coming back to this section drag and drop so we have interior cross beams exterior cross beams and the same for these two all right so now i'm going to add the boundaries okay so for the boundary whatever you need to do just right click on the screen go to the boundary and select support so I uh, need to just um, select one node. I'm going to apply the uh, boundary elements at the two sides on the abutments. So let's start with this node. I want to um, constrain all the uh, displacements and say apply. And for example, for next next one, I'm just going with the DX and DZ. So I need to just uncheck the DY and say apply. So the, you have to do the same steps for the rest of the nodes. 
So I'm opening another file. Which we have the supports here. Let me um, just display them. Okay. So we have the uh, geometry is created. Now um, we're moving to loading. You have to define loads. So the first thing I'm going to do define load um, loading groups. Okay, going to the at the top here. Beside the work, we have a icon called group, and then on a load group, right click and select new. So we enter the names. Call it PC beam. Say add deck. Add failures. Add wearing surface. Add pre-stress. Add. Okay. Cool. So we have our um, uh, load groups, and then now uh, I'm going back to work and uh, defining the static loads. So right click, going to load static load cases. All right, the first one I'm going to define will be PC beam, and the type is dead load. So dead and add another one. Let's say um, make a deck here, and the type is. Take load of the component and attachment. Okay, and and you can add the um, other uh, load, loads, static loads. Uh, now I'm going to finish this one. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you how to define the self weight. So right click and load coming to self weight. We're selecting for the PC beam and the load group going with PC beam on the Z direction negative one add and close. So uh, we are not applying the, the self way to other uh, components and um, actually we are going to apply the uh, distributed load instead of the um, self weight. And let me show you how to assign a this and display this. Okay, so I'm going to assign the deck load to interior precast. So if I go to my sections, interior precast, double click on that, so they are selected now, and then right click, load and um, element beam load. So I'm selecting the deck and load group deck. We don't have eccentricity so I'm taking this off. It's going to be in the Z and uh, global Z direction and the magnitude going to be negative 0.922. Apply if I go to the 3D view, you can see that. Close. Right. So now I'm opening another file which has all the um, loads defined and assigned. Let me show you. By displaying, you can see the loads are um, assigned and display. Okay. The next step is uh, defining the tendons. So. Very first thing, um, as we did for the um, load, we're going to group and uh, defining the tendon groups. Okay, uh, right here, I need just to right click and say new. So this window opens. Uh, names are going to have 12 groups uh, with name of uh, tendon 1 to tendon 12. So I'm going with the name tendon 
and just the suffix will be changing. So it's so that one, two, twelve. Very simple. And then add, you have all the tendons here. Close. Okay, going back to work tab and the tendon properties. If you right click on the main screen, going to properties, going to the load, pre-stress loads, and tendon properties. Right here. Okay. So we are adding Okay, I'm going to define two type of um, um, tendons, one TH and one TS. Okay, I start with TH as a pretension, and the material is a tendon, and the total uh, tendon area. Right click on this. I mean, on this uh, bottom. If you click, you have different type of the tendon. So I'm going with the half an inch and uh, uh, 14 strands okay and for the relaxation coefficient uh, I'm going with CB FIB FIP and ultimate strength ultimate strength I'm going to 270 okay these values are for in keep per um, uh, square foot. So um, if I have the values for KSI, I can go with 270 and um, 243 for the ultimate strength and yield, uh, yield strength. So for now, I stick with these values and say apply. Okay, you can see at the left side that the TH uh, is created. So I'm going with the next one. I'm going to call it TS, tendon straight. Uh, the same uh, properties, but the tendon area will change. We stick with the half an inch, but the number of um, strand increases to 34. Okay. And so for relaxation, we stick with the CB, FIP, and say okay. Now we have both of the strands. Close. Now we need to define the um, tendon profile. Okay, so right click, going to load, press stress load, and tendon profile. Press add, and tendon name, let's call it TH1 from group tendon 1 and tendon property I'm, uh, first I'm going to define TH tendons and then uh, we want to know which where we are we are going to assign this element so if you just click on that you don't need to remember um, node number or element numbers so let me switch to top view okay so First, I'm going to assign this to, to the very uh, lower bottom uh, element. So select this oh, from left to right. So select just everything is in the window. Okay. So you can see here from one to two, one to twenty-three by two. So input going with 3D and for now uh, we, are, we have two type of curves the spline or round we stick with the spline now and then um, reference axis I have um, options to be a straight curve or along the element so we, we stick with the uh, straight and then we applying the um, coordination. So if you have the coordination um, already in the um, spreadsheet in Excel, you can just uh, copy and paste it here or if you have it manual, 
and you piece of paper so you can enter it manually. Let me enter um, just four points. Start with 0, 0, 64, 5, 7, 6, 5, 7, 6, 0, and 14. 8, 64, 0, and 14. 14, 40, 0, and 64. Okay. And I can fix uh, two uh, nodes in the middle, which uh, it's your option, you want to do it or not. But it's actually, um, keep it in the that place, exact that that place, it doesn't uh, interpolate it. All right, and then for the uh, insertion point or reference point, we're going with the uh, depth of neutral axis of the section, which was negative 52.79. So go negative uh, this value down. Let's see apply. Okay, so we have one section, one uh, profile created. Let me close this, switch to the, to the view. And uh, what I'm going to do, um, okay, so it's very easy. If you have the, uh, your tandem profile somewhere, you can easily um, uh, import it to the software and uh, let me show you how to do that. Let me delete this and then go to the command shell tools, uh, MCT command shell, which is uh, which allow me to uh, insert the text format files. So you see we have tandem profile created here, open and just run. All right, close. So if I come back to the left side on my work tree, right click, you can see that we have 12 um, um, tandem profile created. So if I double click on each one, it shows that it's assigned to which elements and uh, how is the profile. Okay, you can see the THs and TSs. All right, I'm gonna open a new file which has all this stuff defined. Next step is to apply the press dress load to the attendance. So easily right click, go to the load, press dress load, and turn them press dress loads. Okay, press that. We are selecting the pre-stress from the group name pre-stress, selecting all. And add it. The load, uh, the stress applied uh, in the beginning is 183.9. KSI, and we'll say add and close. Okay, so we're done with the tendons and uh, moving on to the moving load. Okay, so for the moving load, we have to create the uh, structure group, going back to groups. On the structure group, we need to just right click and say new. We define as a cross beam. Okay, so it's not assigned to anything yet. So what I do is by pressing this button here, I can select um, all, but I need just the So I can go to the material and select the cross beams. You can you see that they are highlighted. Go back to the group 
and drag and drop it. Now, 65 elements are um, assigned to this group. Okay, going back to work. And now we're, go we're going to define the line length. So right click, uh, <coughs> right click, going to load and moving load analysis data. First, we need to define the uh, load code. So uh, we're working with H2LRFD. Okay. Right click again, going to load. Moving load analysis and traffic line lane. Okay, so simply you can press add and um, select the name, let's say lane one. Eccentricity. Oh, first of all, let me switch to keep foot at lane one. Okay, eccentricity for the first lane, eccentricity is negative 4.5. It was shown in the first uh, PowerPoint uh, which I showed you. We are uh, going to assign it to cross beams in respect to one line. So um, my reference line could be defined with two points. The first point here, you can see that uh, the background became green, light green. So it's going to be this point and the last one going to be this point. Okay, say apply. And if I switch to top view, we can see the first line is created. We go to the we'll go to the second lane, lane two, eccentricity negative sixteen point five. Delete this. Again okay, from here here and apply we have the second line lane 3 the eccentricity 28.5 and reference line from here to here and apply and finally the fourth lane with eccentricity of negative 40.5 okay reference line again from here to here all right say apply and close so we have um, four lanes defined now we're going to define the vehicle right click going to load Moving load analysis and here vehicle. As a standard, okay, we uh, based on the actual RFD, we're going with the standard uh, vehicle. We also have option here. If you see, we have option to add the user defined, but for now we're going with um, standard vehicle. So the first one is HL93 truck with the 33 percent of dynamic load analysis. Apply. Second one, go with the tendon with the 33 um, person dynamic load analysis. And the other ones, apply and close. Okay. Last step is to define the uh, moving load cases. So going to moving load moving load cases. Press add. I'm calling it moving load. And uh, press add. First we um, adding the tender. Selecting all lanes. Add it. And the, we can define the minimum and maximum um, number of lanes. One and four. Okay. And one more time. With this time we're going with the truck. And the minimum number one and the maximum number four. Okay. 
selecting all lanes, add, and OK. All right, so I need to just close it. Close. And the very, very last thing for the moving load is to um, go to the moving load analysis control on the analysis bottom here, moving load analysis control. So you can exact influence, uh, influence line, number of element three, and we go with the uh, normal and uh, concurrent forces. Yesterday I explained this, but, uh, this option. If you select just normal, we're going to have um, just the uh, values for each point, but if you select the normal and the concurrent forces, you could have the all uh, loads and moments uh, for each element. Uh, for example, if you select one, um, for, for you arrange them for a moment, maximum moment, you're going to have the shear and axial forces and torsion for uh, that element uh, for that maximum load. I will explain it later. Okay. So let me, we're done with the moving load. Let me open the file for moving load. All right. Now I'm going to define the time dependent material properties. So just on the main manuscript, right click to the properties, you can see the time dependent material for creep and shrinkage. Okay. Press add. Uh, for a name, I'm calling it CEBFIP. For the compressive strength of concrete, uh, I'm applying, let me actually change the unit first, going to inch, right click, properties, time dependent material for shrinkage, and CEB, FIP. 6.5 um, KSI or K per square inch and uh, notational size I'm entering 10 and OK. Next uh, time dependent material is con uh, composite the strength of concrete so I'm going here press add and I stick with uh, CBFIP, compressive strength of 7.66, and show me the result of the graph. OK. Complete. OK. Next step is to is the material link going to properties, material links, selecting creep and shrinkage based on uh, C B F I P. The same thing for concrete strength, and then selecting the precast beam, add it, and add it down here. So. This material property would be um, effective on the pre-stress uh, beams. All right, close. And the last step here is changing the element um, dependent properties. Go to properties, change element dependent material properties. So simply select all and apply. Okay. So we're done with this. We're uh, moving to uh, construction stage. OK, 
for this one I'm going to uh, group and creating uh, one structure group I click new I call it all okay and then select all and apply to all on the boundary also I can right click new I call it support okay and then select all again drag and drop it here and ask me to apply to which one so for now we don't have any other uh, other stuff but now we could just unselect them and say okay now we're done with the groups uh, moving to uh, structural stages okay right click load construction stage analysis data define construction stages so first we have to generate um, stages um, we're gonna have three stages I'm calling it stage and put the suffix one two three duration I'm gonna define it later and stages and additionals apply okay so now we have all three um, stages here first we're moving to the stage one the stage one duration uh, going to be 30 days and I want an additional step in uh, in between this from day 0 to day 30 for um, pouring, the con for pouring the, the concrete so I'm going to the day 21 Let's say add so for here on the down here on the element I select all on day 7 and add it go to boundaries supports uh, secret deformed and add it and on the load uh, for the pre-stressed one on the day first see when you uh, open this window uh, we, you have three options first last or the uh, additional step that you define for example, your first, last, and 21st. Okay. For the prester, it's going to be from first day, add, PC beam, I do it from first day, add, and the deck will be activated from day 21st. Okay. Just press apply. If I go back to now we're defining the stage two. Uh, duration for stage two is 30, 30 days. An additional step I'm going to define six day. Add. And on the L, um, on the loads, we have burn surface will be activated on the day six which is uh, the time that the um, deck is set and now we could add the uh, like asphalt to that okay. add and apply now I'm switching to stage 3 duration going to be 10,000 I'm going to see the long term um, effect it's going to be 30 days, 30 years uh, we don't have any additional steps and say okay close it and if we go back to the work here we see the construction of this left let me shorten this okay so you can see them a better stage one what's going on here stage two and stage three Next step, 
going to load construction research analysis composite section for construction. So we have to define the composite section and uh, tell the program that when to activate the deck and uh, consider them as a composite section. Okay. Press add. For activate stage, we start with um, stage one, section one, interior precast, normal, and here, down here. Uh, for the part one, you see there are like two parts. Part one is the girder, part two is the deck. So for part one in this stage, we're going with the material precast beam, activate stage, stage one. H7 is the time that we activated the other time. And for part two, from the material, material was is a deck. And start from stage two and the age 10 days, from day 21 to uh, 30. So press apply. Going to stage, uh, sticking with stage one, we're gonna define for exterior um, precast. Okay, exterior, you see they are highlighted here. Normal and the same thing for the material. So you precast me. Stage one, age seven. And the same thing for the deck, stage two and stage ten. Okay, apply and close. Okay, we're done with the uh, construction stages, and now the very last thing is to go to the construction stage analysis control and control whatever uh, we want. So everything keep it as a um, default. Uh, now one thing we could um, add here is to add the wearing surface to be considered as a um, an erection load and it's not um, because everything uh, and later it's going to be shown in the uh, construction stages, so this one would be selected to uh, show the result for the reaction loads. Okay. Okay. And we are ready to um, run the analysis. Let me just open the next file. Okay, we need just to hit the bottom up here, perform analysis. It takes a uh, couple of seconds to finish analysis. Actually, yesterday um, I showed um, some of the options and features of the software, how to extract the um, outputs. Um, so today I'm not going to go through everything again. Uh, because uh, some most of these audience are from yesterday, so you know it. All right, it took uh, 24 seconds to finish the analysis. Now moving on to the uh, results. So let me open the perform analysis. Alright, on the results we could um, define the combinations, which is um, already on this file is created. So we could what you can do is go to the auto generation and select the uh, HDLRFD and the um, software automatically um, creates these uh, load combinations. Okay.
Okay. I'm going back to load. Construction stages. Okay. On the stage one. You switch to the stage one and top here. Let me perform the analysis again. All right, so now here uh, we're selecting the stage one. I'm going to show you how to see the results on the uh, different stages. So going to force uh, beam diagram and uh, here you have different steps. First step you, or middle, span, middle step or last one. And for now let's go with the dead load moment, uh, legend, and say apply. So let me go with the solid field, you can see them better. Okay. On the stage one, let's see, for example, uh, on this component, we're going gonna, gonna to show you, we have to, if you remember, um, our mm, composite section had two parts. Part one was the girder, and part two was the uh, jack. So uh, if I select part 1 and uh, as for the value of the moment shown here, if I go to the part 2, there's 0 because actually the first stage we don't have any um, deck. It's not activated yet. If I switch to stage 2, so you can see the uh, moment on part 2 and moment, and moment on part 1 and uh, total is the total load uh, total moment uh, on the entire composite section. Okay, you can see the different uh, values here. For example, if Z apply, now you can see that. Okay. So if I switch to summation, it's gonna give me the uh, sum of um, entire of the sum of all the loads. So let's go to the MY and apply. You can see that in different steps, let's say step one and the last step. So you easily you can see that how uh, I mean you can see them um, how they are varying visually. Also you can get the um, result um, as a tabular form format. So we not uh, just to come up here go with the summation and press OK and you have everything. Um, if you right click you can export it to Excel. Let me close it for now. Uh, if I switch to the uh, post construction stage I can show you to the I can go to the result. Tandem, time dependent loss. So here I'm going to show you how the um, software creates the <coughs> losses um, of the tendons. So you can see here on the stage one, and all the tendons are available here. Let's say TH1. 
um, stage one and the first step. And you can select, select the other steps. And also you can uh, create the animation. So here it tells you which stage is that. Okay, for different stage and different steps, you have the total, uh, showing the total losses. All right, you can have also this one in a tabular format. Um, just need to go to result, result table, and uh, tendons, and tendon losses. Okay, so you have everything here, so you can change it. Uh, name of the tendon, so tendon 1 to 2 and different stages, let's say stage 3 and apply. Everything changes in a second. And uh, you can also export it to Excel, right click on that and export. So um, the very last thing I'm going to show you is the moving load tracer. Um, let me close this one also. Okay, let me show you other moment for part one, part two, and the total. You see how it changes for the uh, maximum moving load, uh, which I selected here. So technically, you have all the load combinations and moving loads. You can select them from here to see which one do you want to see. Okay. Let's move to um, moving load tracer reaction for uh, beam uh, force and moments. And uh, let's say let me switch. To, okay, you want to see uh, which combination, which load combination, or uh, which load pattern is. Uh, causing the maximum moment um, on a certain element. For example, let's say I want to select this element right here. I want to see which uh, load is causing maximum effect on that. Okay. If I switch to the top view, you can see that. Um, if I want to change the element, let's say I want this one in the middle. Let's say apply the other load pattern uh, will be applied. So let's go with number 3 and apply. And there is a good thing right here. You can press this button and the software will automatically save um, this load pattern as a, a static load, which you, later on you can open it in the software, apply it to, the, to your structure and um, having a uh, one static load instead of a moving load. Okay. Here is a text format. And what could we do? Go to tools, MCT command shell, open it and moving load, open and run it. So yes, overwrite it. Close and if you come back to the static load, we have one additional uh, let me open it again. Open three open and run it. I'll accept this one. I'm working on that. Give me a second. Okay. 
I was on the other stage. All right, so you can see that uh, this moving dot, which was uh, causing the um, maximum moment on the element three, it's added as a static dot. This is all I want to cover today. Um, thank you everybody for attending this webinar. I hope this tutorial was helpful and uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. I uh, will show you my contact here. Uh, you can email me or call me directly uh, or my colleague Aaron is also here, can help you. You guys have a good day and uh, if you have questions, uh, we are still here and uh, we could answer them uh, via this chat box. Thank you everybody.